In this video, we want to try and discuss in very simple terms the phenomenon of precession and the principles of uh, what makes a gyroscope work. Now, for this video, we're going to rely heavily on what we did in the, the three previous videos in our series on analytical mechanics, videos number 26, 27, and especially video number 28. The video playlist is at the website digital-university.org. Now, here we're just trying to demonstrate a very simple system, a rotating disc attached to a pivot arm, and here then is a pivot point for that pivot arm. Now, of course, if the disc is not spinning, this is just going to fall straight down. When the disc is spinning, what's going to happen then? First, let's think about what are the torques involved in the uh, in this system. Now we have a point P, our pivot point, and a point C, the uh, center of the disc, the center of the mass of the disc, and right here then is the weight pulling straight down. And the disc is spinning in this direction with an angular velocity omega. Now is there a torque here at point C? And the answer is no, because the weight is pulling down at point C. And of course, when you have a torque, there's a position vector, and there's a force. And you usually have, at the end of the position vector, then there's some force being applied. Well, right here at, at, at the point C, that's where the weight is. So the position vector would be zero. So about point C, the torque is zero. Now, what about with respect to point P? Then here the position vector is the pivot arm of length D cross MG. These are perpendicular, so with respect to point P, the torque is dmg, and it's a constant. That's a constant, this is a constant, and this is a constant. Now what about the direction of the torque at point P? So D is pointing in this direction, the weight is straight down, But now remember, when you take the torque of two vectors, you have to consider them being head to head. So this we draw over here for mg. Here is d, and that torque, of course, is d cross mg. Then we use our right hand rule to get the direction. When we do that, you see our thumb was pointing right straight into the board. So the torque from point P is perpendicular to the pivot arm pointing right straight into the board. Now the disc is spinning. What angular momentum does the disc have? So now we want to consider how the torque at P, that's dmg, and the torque is pointing right into the board. Okay, the angular momentum at point C, of course in general the angular momentum is some radius vector or some position vector cross mv. At point C, that angular momentum is just going to be the radius of the circle, R, cross MV, and the tangential velocity is always perpendicular to the radius vector, R. So again, the sine of that 90 degree angle is 1, so this is just R, M, V, and this is constant. R is constant, 
m is constant and we're having this rotating about an angular velo constant angular velocity omega now what about the direction of the angular momentum so we're going to take the cross product of r cross mv so here's r Here's V, but again we have to consider them head to head, so imagine we take V over to here, and then we want to wrap R, or wrap R in the direction of V. When we do that, our thumb was pointing to the right. So the angle of the momentum is pointing in this direction. With respect to the angle of the momentum with respect to point C the center of the disk. So this now is very uh, similar to what we had in the last video, uh, video 28, where the angle of the momentum is in a direction, and the torque, that's pointing straight into the board perpendicular to this. Now, as we demonstrated in the last video, when the torque is perpendicular to the angular momentum, the magnitude of the angular momentum stays constant, but its direction changes. And of course, its direction has to change in the direction that the torque is pointing, because that's what the torque is. The torque is dl dc, or time derivative of the angular momentum. So this is going to change in the direction of the torque. There will be no change in the magnitude of the angular momentum because the torque is exactly perpendicular to it. Under those circumstances, only the direction of the angular momentum changes. We proved that in the previous video. So we have it like this then. angular momentum is like this and sometime later it's going to be like this and that would be some angle theta now, this is equal to gamma delta t. Remember that dl dt equals gamma. And gamma, the torque, that's constant. That's dmg. So we can write it like this. So here we have then is that then once the angle momentum has changed direction, the torque is still perpendicular to it, like this. So again, the angle momentum changes direction. The torque is perpendicular to it. Once again, the angle momentum changes direction. So what happened is that the pivot arm just keeps rotating around in a circle. As it's doing that, we can think of it then that the angular momentum is continuously chasing the torque vector that is always perpendicular to it. Now, if this angle here, theta, if that's measured in radians, then we know that the change in angular momentum is just LC times the change in theta, when theta is measured in radians. Now, and then this is always constant, and it never changes because the torque is always perpendicular to the angular momentum. Let's divide both sides of the equation by delta t.
this is the torque, and it's the torque with respect to P, this is telling us then the angular velocity of the pivot arm as it rotates about. So this, we'll call this omega, we have the torque equals the angular momentum times omega, where omega is the angular velocity of precession. Let's call it PR. It is how fast this angle theta chases, that is how fast the pivot arm rotates around in a circle. So we can say then that the angle of the velocity of precession equals the torque with respect to point P divided by the angular momentum. Now, this equation obviously is valid only within a certain range of values. If the angular momentum is zero, then it's not going to spin around with an infinite uh, angular velocity. It's just going to fall straight down. So this is true, but again, it's only true within a working um, set of parameters. Going back to here, the angular momentum chases that torque vector about, provided that it is strong enough to overcome the tendency for the disk to, to fall down. So the disk has to be spinning fast enough to have this of sufficient strength so that this then, the angular momentum vector, is always chasing the torque vector about in the circle. Now this, we know what that is, that's dmg, m being the mass of the disk. So this is dmg. Now angular momentum, in general, angular momentum is equal to the moment of inertia times angular velocity. So here, for point C, it is the moment of inertia of the disk times the angular velocity that the disk is rotating about. So we can put this down here. And here then, within a certain range of values, these here will determine then the angular velocity of precession. But suppose that our axis went out beyond the disk and we could attach another mass to it right here, a small amount of mass, call that capital M. Now, this mask is not part of the disk, so it does not affect the angular momentum of the disk, and it's not going to affect the angular velocity of the disk. But we do have an extra M, an extra mass up here in the numerator. Well, then that tells us that the angular velocity of precession should increase, and indeed it does. You can see demonstrations where a gyroscope is spinning in a circle, you add a little bit of mass to it, and it spins around even faster. Now obviously again, there's just a certain range of values for which this is valid for. If you put a whole lot of mass on, of course, it's just going to tip it over. So these equations that we derived Hopefully they make sense now. The whole thing is predicated upon the fact that when this disk is spinning, the torque at point P that is due to gravity pulling down on this, that torque is perpendicular to this angular momentum so that the angular momentum changes in direction. keeping a constant magnitude. When it does that, the torque is now like this, and it just keeps chasing the torque around in a circle. And that's really the simplest way of, of trying to explain what lies behind uh, the phenomenon of precession.
So hopefully that was useful. In other detail, or in other videos, we'll consider this kind of a system in more detail. But again, the whole thing is predicated upon the torque being perpendicular to the angular momentum. And as we demonstrated in the last video, when that happens, the angular momentum will change direction in the direction of the torque, but it's its magnitude stays the same. And again, we proved that in back in video number 28.